What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for my very first review of Unexpected Season 5, Episode 1, Got Another Girl Pregnant. So we're going to start off with Kylan and Jason. Kylan is 17, Jason is 18 years old, and they're from New Hampshire. So um, when we first meet them, they are actually together at Jason's home because Kylan lives with Jason and his parents and they are trying to find the baby's heartbeat with the Doppler so that was a really cute little scene they've been dating for almost a year Kylan is 32 weeks pregnant and they met through snapchat um, he called her the party girl and he is a self-proclaimed f-boy and hopefully he is a retired self-proclaimed f-boy because he's in a whole relationship and about to be a father so Jason says that he wasn't disappointed when she found when he found out that Colin was pregnant he said that he was actually kind of happy about it um, he was even happier to find out that he was going to be having a boy when they did the gender reveal party he said that he almost cried when he found out that he was going to have a son Jason says he's wicked happy to have a boy Heidi and Scott are Jason's parents and like I said before Kylan lives with Jason and his parents at their home Jason was a rule breaker the parents tell us that he was very very rebellious he broke every rule that they've ever made and he's also a dropout Kylan lives okay Jason is an only child so I guess there's plenty of room for her and the baby and Jason told his mom that she was going to be a grandmother with a greeting card that says something about you know something about her being a grandma and it was recorded for social media I guess he put it on his TikTok or Snapchat but that's how this generation is nowadays you know everything is on social media even telling your mother something so life-changing and so personal as that you know you're going to be a teen father that was broadcasted for the whole world to see so Jason is really pushing for a home birth I'm not understanding why he wants to do that I don't know if he thinks because it's going to be cheaper I mean it will definitely be cheaper than a hospital birth but I wonder if that's the reason why he's really pushing for this home birth but he's like a, a big advocate for home births and he tells his parents that it's going to cost him about three thousand dollars for the home birth and the parents are like you know what we love you we want to be there for you if you're going to chip in we'll chip in but we're not going to foot the whole bill so of course Jason says he has a plan he says that he's got everything figured out he's one of those 18 year old kids that thinks that you know he's lived a lifetime already and he's got life all figured out he doesn't want anyone to tell him what to do and his dad is always like okay if you got to figure it out then you got to figure it out you know go work it out make it happen so they're watching a home birth video him and Kylan and his parents are sitting in the living room watching a home birth video and um, Jason like I said he's really pushing for Kylan to have a home birth Kylan is a little bit hesitant okay she's not really sure that's the route that she wants to take and Jason needs to you know listen to her because she's the one that's going to be going through the process and I'm pretty sure Jason you want her to be as comfortable as possible when she's giving birth to your child um Colin is grossed out by the whole home birth thing because she's like you know I don't want to be sitting in the water while you know all these fluids are coming out of me um that doesn't sound very appealing to me like I said Colin seems like she's really leaning towards a hospital birth Jason says what do you do with the tub afterwards like who cares you're gonna go dump the water out right in the backyard or something right and Colin says well um you're gonna dump it out in the sink um Jason thinks that you know he's seen a couple of home birth videos on YouTube now he considers himself an expert and he's ready for his doula license Jason gets a little bit this is what Colin tells us she tells us that when he doesn't get his way he gets really really angry uh, when he doesn't get his way so all I can say is good luck on that Colin I hope you get what you want whatever that is because we need you to be comfortable when you're giving birth we're moving on to Lily and Lawrence Lily and Lawrence they are an oldie but goodie couple they are from well Lily herself she's from I think from two seasons prior uh, we had met Lily when she was first pregnant with her first daughter Aaliyah and that was with another father and I forgot what his name was so that's the first time that we had met Lily it was about three years ago when she was on this show um, and there was a lot of ups and downs breakup and makeups with that whole relationship I remember in that season when she was pregnant with Lily um, 
I think the father really wasn't interested in being a dad or something. Like he really wasn't looking forward to being a dad. And I remember his mother and I remember, yeah, I remember that season. So I don't know what happened to that guy. I don't know if he's still a part of Lily's, I mean, of Aaliyah's life because Aaliyah is her three-year-old daughter. I don't know if he's still a part of Aaliyah's life. I have no idea, but whatever, here we are. So she just had her second child with Lawrence. They call the baby LJ. He's about seven months old. And when we meet, Meet them again they just found out that they were approved for an apartment so Lily's extremely excited about that now Lily says in her confessional that when she was about 14 15 years old when she pictured her 20 year old self in the future she saw herself living a very rich and glamorous life but no job um, catching flights and all this other crazy stuff what I don't understand is that 14 and 15 years old why didn't you see yourself you know at 20 being college educated having a career yeah living the rich and glamorous life and catching flights but having a career that can you know supply that kind of a lifestyle but she saw the results of it but she just didn't see herself you know like really doing anything to get to that point then we see a really quick flashback scene with um from the previous season when they just brought LJ home little LJ home and Aaliyah wanted to hold her baby brother for the very first time and Lawrence for some reason he was really hesitant about giving Aaliyah the baby for her to hold now we know with you know children as young as Aaliyah at that time she's probably about two years old they're not going to actually hold the baby themselves you know they're going to have an adult holding the baby you know with them or for them uh, but for whatever reason Lawrence did not want Aaliyah to hold the baby he was very worried very over overprotective and I'm like what are you so overprotective about you know why do you feel the need to protect your baby from Aaliyah but whatever I guess they went they've gotten past that he's learned to be um, a little bit more accepting um a little bit more trusting of Aaliyah she's not going to drop the baby she loves her little brother so Lawrence we need you to chill so the parents introduced themselves. So her mother, you know, she's like, you know, my name is Kim. I'm Lily's mom. And then her stepfather says, my name is Glenn. I'm Kim's husband. And I thought that was kind of strange that he introduced himself as Kim's husband and not as Aaliyah's stepfather, because I'm like, um, this show is about not Aaliyah, Lily. This show is about Lily and her life as a young parent. And so we want to know how everybody relates to Lily. So I thought it was strange that the stepfather just says, Hey, I'm Glenn and I'm her husband instead of I'm Glenn and I'm Lily's stepdad. So the grandmother, which is Kim, um, Lily's mom, she's very hesitant about them moving out. Um, I guess, you know, she's so used to them living in her home and her being there for them because she was telling Lily, well, you know, I've done so much for y'all. I'm helping you with the baby. I wake up with Aaliyah and I get her started for her day. So you're going to have to do all of that on your own now if you move out. And, you know, Lily and Lawrence are like, yeah, we're going to do it. We'll be fine. They can't wait to get the hell out of that house and, you know, be on their own. And it's really understandable because it is time. Lily is 20. She's not 17 18 years old she's 20 years old yeah so it's time you know it's time mom it'll be fine and now that they're going to be getting their own place they're going to be uh talking about the wedding again because the wedding had been put on hold because Lily said that she didn't want to go get married and then just come right back home to her parents house she wanted to get married and then go into her own home so um hopefully we're going to be seeing a wedding uh by the end of the season moving on to Emerson and Mason. Emerson is 18 and Mason is 17 years old from Washington State. Emerson is 34 weeks pregnant and we find out that she was pregnant at the same time as her mother. Her mother who is 40 years old and her name is Erica. Uh, she had just, she's just given birth I'm assuming. Um, I'm assuming that obviously the mother was a little bit further ahead than Emerson was because I think the mother's already given birth. So we meet Erica the mom and she also has a step father named Sai, but we don't see him only in pictures I don't know what's going on there and the mother Erica tells us that Emerson was a very rebellious child she would sneak out she smoked marijuana and it got so bad that Erica wanted to put her in a military school but then COVID hit 
and uh, those plans were scratched. So the, the relationship between Emerson and her mother is described as being very complicated. Uh, she found out that she was pregnant when she was on a camping trip with her boyfriend, Mason. She said that, you know, she had missed her period and she was wondering what the hell was going on. So she bought a pregnancy test. And then when they went camping, she took the test and it was positive. Emerson also tells us that she was more scared to tell her mom that she was pregnant than she was of actually being pregnant. And when she said that her mom didn't know that her mom looked at her and her mom was like really and Emerson was like yep so her mom gives off you know controlling controlling vibes like she's a very controlling woman but for whatever reason she couldn't quite control her daughter so her and uh, Mason have been together for about 11 months and of course they met where all teenagers meet on social media Eric said, Erica, her mother, said that she did a background check on Mason to make sure that he wasn't some kind of uh, some type of a pedophile. Now, when she said that, I assumed that obviously she meant she, she did a background check on Mason, you know, for all kinds of things, you know, to make sure that he wasn't someone who's been to jail and, you know, whatever, whatever. She was checking for all kinds of things. But the word that she used or the word that they used on the show was pedophile, which I thought was funny because, um... Emerson is actually older than Mason. And when I look at their personalities, it seems like Emerson is the more controlling one, probably gets it from her mother. And she seems to be the one that's um, a little bit more like, uh, she's not as timid and introverted as Mason appears to be. Mason seems like the more quiet one. And Emerson is the more, you know, extroverted one. So it's funny to me how her mom was like making sure that Mason wasn't someone who was out there trying to take advantage of her daughter. When her daughter seems to be like the one that's a little bit more wild than Mason. Erica, the mother, tells us that when she found out that Emerson was pregnant, she wasn't happy with Mason and his family, even though she had just got done telling us how crazy rebellious Emerson was and she was sneaking out and smoking marijuana and doing all of these crazy things. And she made it a point to say, and marijuana is still illegal. So you're talking about how wild your daughter is, but you felt like um, the parents of Mason and Mason betrayed you, even though you were taking your daughter to his home, to Mason's home, dropping off your daughter there. Okay. But you somehow you felt betrayed by Mason and his family. It's just crazy to me. So we're back at Erica's house. She's um, invited Mason and his father and the siblings to her home for brunch. The mother's not there because the mother is, you know, has her own issues. And so they're sitting there and Erica tells us in her confessional that she thought Mason got Emerson pregnant on purpose to keep them together. No. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think so, Erica. I think Mason is a hormonal teenage boy who got with a hormonal teenage girl who was willing to put out and boom, that's how she got pregnant. I don't think Mason was planning and plotting like some, you know, Greek tragic love story of how to, you know, how to keep this woman in his life. Um, no, sweetheart. I don't think there were just hormonal, a bunch of, a couple of kids who had, you know, were able to sneak away, do what it do, and now you're going to be a grandmother. There's it's nothing more than that, Erica. It's nothing more than that. So she's like constantly throughout the episode, you know, she's blaming Mason and his family. They betrayed her. They took advantage of Emerson, plotting to keep Emerson in his life. Girl, what do, what is this? The Young and the Restless? No. Okay, this happens every day. This is normal everyday life for a lot of people. You had uh, a, a, a girl that was too hot and fast, a boy that was, you know, too hot and fast. And now they're having a baby. That's all it is. As there's no planning. There's no plotting. There is no betrayal. It is what it is. This is what it is. Okay. So she says again that she felt betrayed and lied to. And I'm just like, girl, give it up. Erica, go write for The Young and the Restless and All My Children if that stuff is still airing because you're really over dramatizing this teen mom thing. So we find out that Mason's mom, um, she has a lot of issues. She was fighting cancer. She was fighting addiction to fentanyl. Um, I think she had just come out of jail. So that's why she wasn't at the brunch. Her, his, the mother is going through a lot. 
And Mason, while they're ha eating brunch, Mason asks um, Erica if Emerson can come over and play um, when the baby's born. And Erica seems a little bit hesitant about that. And she tells us in her confessional that she's not so sure about Emerson going over to Mason's house with the baby. Okay, you can't. Okay, but you didn't want to have any control over your daughter before she got pregnant. Now that she is pregnant, now all of a sudden you want to exude all of this control over her and the baby. But you that doesn't make any sense because now she needs to go over to his home so that, you know, that he can bond with his baby and introduce the baby to the rest of his family and allow his family to bond with the baby. So this is not the time all of a sudden, you know, to be that disciplinarian mom when before you were dropping her off at Mason's house all willy nilly. That doesn't make any sense. And so she talks about how she's really worried about Emerson getting pregnant again. Well, put her on birth control, you know, encourage her to get on birth control. And if she gets pregnant again, I mean, which is probably bound to happen, you know, the way the track record is for some of these girls on, on these shows. It is what it is, whether you take her to Mason's house or Mason comes over to your house, they can take the baby for a walk in the park and you should end up pregnant again. It, it is what it is. You need to have a very serious conversation with her about birth control. And then it's not going to matter whether she goes to his house or not. Moving on. Tyra and Layla. Tyra is 20. Layla is her baby girl who was two years old from Kentucky. So we met Tyra last year. You know, she had her and Alex were going through their ups and downs when um, Layla was born. Uh, remember, Tyra had left her hometown to go to college in another town. And Alex was left with the baby at his grandmother's house. And his grandmother was helping him, you know, take care of Layla while Tara was away at school. And Tara would drop in now and then. But really, she was really focused on school and cheer and living her own life and doing her own thing. And I don't care what anybody says to me. I feel like Tara was probably purposely running away from her responsibilities as a mother. Maybe because it was overwhelming. Maybe because she needed a break. It was too much for her or whatever. But I I always felt like when she left to go to school, she was like, oh, this is my way out because no one's going to tell her don't go to school and better yourself. So I think that she used that as a way out of um, motherhood. I'm not saying she was wrong. I'm not saying she was right, but I need to call the thing a thing. And to me, that's what I saw that she just wanted a break from being a mom. And she wanted to live that teenage life, that college life that she was going to be missing out on. So, but she's back. Okay, she's back. She's back and back and she's back in her hometown. And I was shocked to because last year they were breaking up. Alex was seeing another girl. Um, the show hinted as if maybe Tara would have been interested in another guy at school um, or other guys at school. I don't know. But now she's back and she tells us that her and Alex moved in together. So Melissa, which is Tyra's mom, um, you know, we're introduced to her again and she's telling her mom that yes, her and Alex are living together. And she found out that Alex was seeing another girl. No, he told her, he told her that he wanted to see other people. He wanted to see another girl and that he really wasn't feeling this whole relationship with Tyra anymore. And then the mother asked her, well, when were the last time that y'all were intimate? And Tyra says last night. And the mother was like, you can still be with him knowing that he's with another girl. And Tara, you know, she was like, well, I can do what I want. I mean, she was sleeping with my man, you know, so I can still sleep with him because, you know, I can do what I want. And he's not going to he's not going to say no to me. And I'm not going to say no to him. And I'm like, girl, you went to college and learned nothing, learned absolutely nothing. What the hell are you talking about? Like, what are you talking about? Oh, what? <laughs> um, this man told you that he's not feeling you no more and he wants to go be with other people. And basically he's letting you know, but yeah, but I'm going to still sleep with you because that's really all I'm going to need from you. But my heart is with someone else and you're still going to sleep with him. Okay. So. <sighs> um, Alex plans to go live with this other girl and there's a rumor that this other girl is pregnant. 
And that's a deal breaker for her. Not the fact that he told you that he's like emotionally attached in a, you know, in a roundabout way, he's telling her that he's got feelings for another female. That's not a deal breaker for you. But if she's pregnant, then it's over. <laughs> girl, girl, you went to college and learned nothing. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm still not, I'm still haven't gotten over the fact that they were living together because at the end of last season, it looked like they were done. She was absolutely done with him, but then they move in together or maybe she had her own place and then he moved in with her because he needed somewhere to stay. And then he, but he's like, you know, still talk. Ugh, I'm like, oh my God. All right, Tyra, just please, please, for the love of God and all that's holy, don't get pregnant again. That is my review of Unexpected. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking it out with me. I really do appreciate it. Go ahead and rate this video, leave a comment, and please don't forget to subscribe. And I will most definitely talk to you later.